What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Another edition of the DFS OGs podcast right here on rotogrinders.com. Week 15 up next. Week 14 uh, in the books. We're back to a full slate of games. We got Saturday games. We're going to cover everything from a betting perspective, as always, give you some of our best bets for the week. Want to say thank you to the sponsor of the show, BetMGM. Uh, If you have not yet, head over there. Use promo code GRINDERS. That'll get you a risk-free bet. Up to one thousand dollars, so take advantage of that. Uh, best time of the year now, football season. Uh, getting to the nitty gritty, so we're going to dive into these games. Let me bring in my boys, notorious head chopper Noto. We'll start with you. Now we were red hot weeks. Uh, what was it? Uh, Twelve and thirteen came back down to earth a little bit, and that's what's going to happen in sports betting and DFS. You're not going to win every single week, so not our finest hour. We, we've certainly had worse. We've certainly had a lot better. So. Decent week. We'll say that. Noto, how was DFS week 14? How you doing, my man? Yeah, I had to go boast on Twitter about our uh, great picks the last couple <laughs> weeks and uh, then go one and four. So uh, the picks could have been a lot better. But, uh, hey, uh, close to Christmas. Got my DraftKings uh, ugly sweater on. Nice. And, uh, yeah, going out to New Orleans. Cal invited me out there to be his plus one at the uh, DraftKings final. So uh, looking forward to that. And uh, I'll be taking advantage of those uh, you know, promo codes at bet MGM. I don't I don't have betting here in Utah, so I'm excited. There you go. Promo code grinders, baby. So yeah, I mean 27 and 5 the previous two weeks. So you know you're you run a record like that, you're allowed to to slip up a little bit. So we'll get back on track here this week. Chop, my man. How was DFS week 14? How we doing, brother? Wasn't bad. Can't complain. Uh, did better than break even, so you can't, can't complain about that. I'm just really I'm hoping we get some picks either via our Slack private message or some DMs. I want to see some pics of single notorious oh, yeah. out on the, out on the prowl <laughs> in a different, in a different city and state. Come on now, man. Don't let us down. Yeah. Well, uh, Sheena's going to be there. So hopefully she can uh, be my wingman. Cause uh, I don't know if Cal's got any game anymore. Very true. There you go. Hey, new Orleans. I mean, that that's the place, man. You, you'll, you'll stumble into some things there. So yeah, <laughs> we, we definitely want to want some, we'll, we'll talk about it next week. Uh, Our little Christmas special next week. Uh, We'll be back uh, next Wednesday, hopefully back on the same slate, so uh, on the same day. So let's get back to to the games here. Let's start with tonight, a rare Thursday recording for us here. We've got Niners and Seahawks up first. We'll be utilizing BetMGM spreads and totals here. We will also be using scoresandodds.com. If you guys haven't checked it out, we've been talking about it all year long. The site just continues to grow, continues to evolve. Uh, going to break down every single game, show you the odds at every different sports book out there, different props, premium picks, uh, all three of us contributing to that as well. So uh, check it out if you have not already, and that will be uh, the visual here if you're watching uh, on YouTube. So get into it. Let's start with Niners. Seahawks opened up Seattle or San Francisco, minus one and a half. That has climbed to three and a half here, total sitting at 43. So Chop, we'll start with you, buddy. Kind of a low total here. I think we're expecting an ugly game here on Thursday night. A lot of injuries uh, to parse through. Obviously, Debo Samuel, the headliner here. Sounds like Kenneth Walker good to go on the Seattle side of things. Uh, Brock Purdy also a little bit beat up. So ugly Thursday nighter here, Chop. Big game for both of these teams. What are you doing with this one? Yeah, I might be way misreading this thing here, but uh, I just I can't see how the Niners don't beat them pretty good, pretty handily. I just uh, the Seahawks are I know the Seahawks are at home and that's a nice venue, a nice home field advantage. But 49ers are man, I think they're the best team when they're when they get, a you know, Debo back for the playoffs. I think they're the best team in the NFC. So I'm going to roll with the Niners here by blow. I don't think I'm going to lock it in. I, I might circle back, but I don't. I don't see how Seattle wins this game. I don't see how Seattle can. Niners are just just too good. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you. I, I prefer the Niners side of this. Looks like a lot of the money coming in on Seattle side of things here uh, with the points. Noto, uh, your take on this one? Low total, Niners Seahawks. Classic Niners coming off of a dominant performance. Seahawks coming off of a terrible performance at home against the Panthers. And you feel like the spread should be a lot higher than three and a half. So feels fishy. Uh, I'm going to stay away from this one, but I, I would lean towards San Fran, but it looks like that's kind of the public side too, in terms of the, the percentage of bets. And then you got most of the money on Seattle, which uh, I never like to be on that side of the bet. 
All right, let's go to Saturday. So we get a three-game uh, Saturday slate here. Kicks off with Colts and Vikings. Vikings opened up five and a half point favorites. That's come down to four uh, total at forty-seven and a half here. So no, no, we talked about the Vikings. We've been talking about them all year. That, that we felt they're a fraud. We all liked the Lions. I'm pretty sure last week, a convincing win uh, for Detroit. Now Minnesota going back home. They're not in danger of missing the playoffs. You know, it, it kind of feels like. You know, do they have you? Sure, they still have some things to play for as far as seeding goes, but a uh, good spot here against the Colts. Surprise the line going the other way, though. Your thoughts here, Colts, Vikings? Yeah, I mean, if I'm the Vikings defensive coordinator, I just send the house of Matt Ryan. Um, if they can build a lead and, you know, kind of uh, make Indy, Indy throw the ball, I think it's going to be, you know, a good bounce back spot for Minnesota. It seems like everyone's kind of off of them. You know, we've been off of them for a while now, but uh, I think I'm going to get back on here. Uh, it feels like it could be a field goal game or either the Vikings just run away with it. I'm hoping the latter. So I'm going to take them. I just don't trust uh, the Colts. I know they're coming off of a bye, but does Jeff, Jeff Saturday know what to do on a bye week? I mean, I don't know if uh, extra rest is going to be helping anybody. They got nothing to play for. So give me uh, give me a Vikings in this one. I don't trust that. Yeah, I don't trust either of these teams. So I, I'm going to stay away from this one. I, I think maybe we get points in this one, so I don't hate an overplay, but – Chop two teams that I just t- – it's hard to get a read on both of these teams. As good as Minnesota's record has been, uh, we, again, the, the analytics tell us they're overrated. The Colts have been a disaster. So probably a lean to Minnesota, but I'm staying away from this one. What are you doing here, Colts, Vikings? I'm leaning towards the Colts. That's about it. It's just because the spread is over a field goal, and I'm not sure that a field goal – more than a field goal separates these teams. So I'm leaning towards the Colts coming off the bye. Yeah, I agree. Jeff Saturday's probably a little outmatched, but uh, eh, you know that that bye week's really good for Jonathan Taylor in that offensive line. So I think they come out with a little bit of extra spark. All right, let's move to Baltimore and Cleveland. Up next, opened up Browns minus two and a half. That has gone to three here at BetMGM. A very low total at thirty-eight. We got the news. Uh, just before recording, Lamar Jackson, to no surprise, officially ruled out for this week. Uh, Tyler Huntley, uh, not on the injury report, expected uh, to be back in there. But, Chop, he wasn't great uh, last week. So uh, now a spot on the road. Uh, Cleveland Browns team that's been very up and down. Deshaun Watson, not been very great either. Uh, I have a best bet uh, in this ugly 38-point total. But, Chop, what are you doing here? Ravens and Browns. You have a best bet. I have a best bet. Uh-oh. Oh, I hope we're, we're not on butt heads here. Uh, I we do might. as well. I do as well. Let's oh, make it. Oh, too. Boy, here we go. I've been I've been on this I've been on the Deshaun and Browns train, you know, thinking that they could really make a run for the playoffs and then and they had it in them and he's looked really bad the last two games or the first game really bad. He he got better. He's only going to get better. He took almost two full years off of football. He's I think the Browns end up winning this game. Uh, and uh, less than a field goal means that uh, there's a pretty good chance they, they cover that spread. So I'm, I'm locking in the Browns. Two for two on the Brownies. I, I like this matchup for them. Now the worry is Dobbins is back. Edwards is back. Cleveland horrific uh, against the run. So, you know, Baltimore is going to try to get that run game going with those two and Huntley. But I'm in agreement with you. I think the Browns are better than this record. Home team. It's sitting at a field goal. I am also on the Cleveland side of things. Best bet number one. Noto, are you with us or are you against us? You're rolling with the Ravens. Yeah, I can't go against my boys. Make it three for three. Um, I really like the spot for Cleveland. Just you guys mentioned, I mean, Hundley had one good game last season. It's the one we all remember. Uh, I think he won somebody a millionaire maker. Other than that, he's been pretty mediocre to below average as a starter. And uh, yeah, just load up against the run and they should be fine in this one. Uh, if you look at the box score from last week, I mean, they had every chance to cover that spread against Cincy. They just continued to make bad mistakes and couldn't score in the red zone. So uh, I think Watson's a little better and they win this one. All right. Nothing makes you feel a little bit more queasy than all of us uh, on the Cleveland Browns. But our record over the years have uh, been pretty strong uh, when we all agree. So Cleveland, best bet number one for all three of us next game. Another best bet coming up for me here in this one, Miami. And Buffalo opened up Buffalo minus seven and a half. That's come down to seven. A total sitting at 44 in this one. So, uh, no, no, Buffalo continues to roll. Miami, you know, kind of stubbed their toe going out to, to L.A. against the Chargers here. I'm going to throw my best bet out there. I think Miami bounces back. I, I think this year I'm going to roll with the Dolphins plus the seven points uh, as a best bet. We've seen Buffalo 
not really blowing people out. You know, the questions about Josh Allen. So I think Miami gets back on track here. I'm going to take them uh, with the points. Best bet number two for me, the Miami Dolphins plus seven. Noda, what do you got here? Miami Buffalo. Yeah, I hate to do it, but I got to go best bet on Buffalo. Uh, Look, uh, the Dolphins were unstoppable the first 12 weeks of the season. The Niners kind of gave a blueprint on how you can slow this offense down. You get some pressure on Tua, you make him uh, throw to the outside. And the Chargers, despite having, you know, no no German James, no Bosa, they were able to, you know, keep this offense in check. I think Buffalo is going to be able to do the same. They want to avenge the loss from earlier in the season. Plus, we got some cold weather, uh, potential snow in Buffalo. Uh, I love the spot for the Bills. I know uh, they continue to play close games, but uh, I think they keep their foot on the gas in this one. All right, Chop, one on Miami, one on Buffalo. You put the best bet in here, or if not, break the tie. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm putting the best bet in on this one. Uh, You know, I I wasn't going to, except for you guys split it, so I might as well break the tie with the best bet. I actually really like Buffalo here uh, for the simple reason that this weather is going to be cold. Tua does not like the cold weather at all. So I think you're going to make this team one-dimensional. If they can run the ball down your throat, then obviously Miami's going to hang in there and maybe even win this game. But if you stop the run, I just don't think Tua can be as effective in this kind of weather. And I got, weather is usually really over, overly exaggerated in the NFL. It really doesn't matter. But there are certain guys who want no part of 30-degree temperatures, and I think Tua is one of them. We'll see. Better better put his winter gear on and then – Get, get, get rolling in that snow to us. So, all right, two for Buffalo, one for Miami. So, I, heard, uh, I heard the Dolphins brought in their own heaters last week for the L.A. game. So uh, <laughs> so what the hell are they going to yeah. need on the sidelines in Buffalo? If you need heaters in L.A., oh, boy. Okay, starting to, starting to uh, <laughs> think about this Miami pick. But it's locked in. We'll, we'll stick with it here. Next game, Atlanta and New Orleans Saints opened up three point favorites. That's gone to four here. Total sitting at 44 in this one. Have a third best bet here. And I'll lead off here. The Falcons have been very good to me. Both sides. I've gone with them. I've gone against them. I'm going back to the well here, guys. I'm taking the Atlanta Falcons plus the four. Best bet number three. I know there's concerns. What is Desmond Ritter? How is he going to look? To me, it can't look any worse than it did with Marcus Mariota. I don't think the game plan changes a whole lot. I think they still want to run the ball. Ritter gives you a little bit of mobility, similar to Mariota. So I think he's going to be fine. In fact, I think they're going to be better through the air. I think he's going to be better than people expect. I'm not sure I'm running out to play him uh, in DFS this week, but I don't mind rolling the lineup out there uh, with him and Drake London. So I'm going Falcons plus the four, best bet number three. Keep the streak going here with my Falcons. Chop. What are you doing in this one, Atlanta, New Orleans? No particular heavy feeling on this one. Uh, If you had to twist my arm and I was at the betting booth in Vegas and I wanted to just get something on the game, I would probably lean towards the Saints only because of the unknown for Desmond Ritter. He may be great, but my memories of Desmond Ritter are put up a great career picking on really small schools in the American Athletic Conference. Then he got up to this one playoff game, his one shot, And he looked very, very overmatched. So I'm not sure what we're going to get out of him. I would lean towards the Saints, but he's an unknown, man. All right, Noto, Falcons, Saints, uh, four-point spread. Uh, Desmond Ritter, your thoughts there? How dumb is it that these two teams are still in the the mix for the title, division title? I mean, this division's so bad. Um, I don't have a strong take on the game. I would just take the points blindly. Kind of agree with you, Beer. I don't think it can be worse than Mariota. Don't think the game plan changes much, but I don't have a strong take on it. Did you guys see that graphic or ESPN trying to change the in the hunt? And, you know, we're sick of calling it in the hunt. So they had a different name for it. They chose loitering. Like, what, what the hell? Loitering? Like, you can't come up with any, all the people you got ESPN. You can't come up with anything better than that. Just, just, but you're right. This division's bad. These teams are bad. I'll take the points in this one. All right, next up, the Red Hot Detroit Lions uh, open up as two-and-a-half-point underdogs to the Jets. That has come down to one total here, sitting at 44-and-a-half. So, no, no, a lot of of publicity on the Lions out there this week. I mean, they've won, I think it's five out of six, a lot of talk about Dan Campbell. Uh, Now they go on the road, face a very, very good, and Jets defense specifically, 
uh, in this one. So can this offense continue to roll here? A tough spot on the road, small spread. What do you got, Jets and Lions? Yeah, I love the Lions. They were my only pick that ended up coming through for me last week. But I'm going to go to the Jets in this one. You know, they've had a lot of uh, two close games in a row where they probably could have won. Um, they had a chance against Buffalo. They just couldn't score there at the end. And uh, going back home, uh, we talked about Tua being outdoors. Jared Goff has had the same problem, you know, throughout his career. Get the, get cold weather outdoors. Those small hands aren't nearly as effective throwing the ball. So I'm going to go with the Jets. I know uh, I hate going against the Lions, but I have to in this one. I'm on the Jets side as well. More of a lean. It, it feels like the public's gonna gonna love the Lions this week. They're the they're the story right now. They're the hot team. But I I have the same concerns. You know this offense. We could see it struggle a little bit here. This Jets defense to me is legit. So a lean towards the Jets. No best bets here for me on this one. Chop. Uh, any stronger feelings here? Jets Lions. Yeah, lock me in. Best bet Jets. Jets, lock it in. I mean, uh, for a lot of the re- – what both of you guys said, Jerry Goff, again, in the cold weather, not his cup of tea. And then on the other side, the Jets are a legit – They I mean, their defense is really good, like super good. So all they need is a little bit of offense. I think they won't have very many problems getting some offense against, against the Lions defense. So, yeah, I like me in the Jets. It just feels right. All right, best bet number three for Chop uh, on the Jets, minus the one. Next game, big spread alert here, Kansas City. Houston opened up 14.5-point spread. That has settled in at two touchdowns in favor of the Chiefs, 49 on the total here, Chop. So, I mean, we know this, this is about the biggest mismatch uh, that you could come up with, uh, the red, the potent offense of the Chiefs, uh, this terrible Texans team who – Gave your Cowboys a scare, and I should have listened to you. I, I was all over Dallas, thought they'd roll, and uh, definitely a, a look-ahead game. Houston hung in there, and they do it again here uh, against Mahomes and the Chiefs. I'm not sure. This is another uh, such a big spread. I'm not sure I want to touch that line either way. Uh, I guess I would lean towards the under in this game if I was at Vegas trying to make a bet. I'd lean towards the under. I just – the, the 14 point two touchdowns like that could get busted so easy in so many different ways and then on the flip side I'm not going to take Houston because again they're going to be down their top two wide receivers or so and then uh and now Pierce can't even play this week so they're in a world of hurt on offense so I just don't feel comfortable with the teams let's just take the under here come on you don't feel comfortable Rex Burkhead <laughs> come on it's, top. Hey, you know what? I will, I will say this much for DFS. Don't give out my – I want to see who the starting running back is for Houston. And uh, whoever that starting running back is, he is a viable option in DFS because Kansas City's defense does give up a ton in the receiving game to the running back position. Yep, no doubt. Like, I mean, most likely playing from behind. I don't I don't see Houston playing with a lead in this one. No, no, big spread here. Uh, you're rolling with the Chiefs. You're taking the 14 at home with Houston, or are you leaving it alone? Yeah, the Texans, Texans might end up starting Jeff Driscoll at running back. Uh, he looked pretty good uh, there. The, using two quarterbacks, it's a unique approach for sure. 14 does feel like a lot. You look at the Chiefs, you know, schedule. They've won a lot of games by between three and seven points. I think they were up by three or four scores last week and didn't end up covering the spread against the Broncos. I'm not going to bet this game, but uh, I would lean towards just, you know, taking the big points at home. All right, Philly, Chicago up next. Uh, another big spread here. Opened up Philly eight and a half point favorites. That's ticked up to nine forty eight and a half on the total here. So, two electric quarterbacks here, Noto Fields and Hertz, uh, should be fun to watch as far as betting goes. Big number on the road here. We've seen the good and the bad out of the Chicago Bears. Uh, can they hang? Can they cover this nine points at home? Yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. I think uh, it should be a good game to target for DFS, especially if the you know the Eagles are able to build a lead early. I think you're going to see a lot of garbage time production. I do think that nine points kind of brings in a backdoor cover from the Bears, and I mean everyone's going to want to bet the Eagles. They looked great last week against the Giants. They looked great the week before that. But uh, yeah, Bears coming off of a bye, playing at home. I'll take the points here. Yeah, this was a fringe best bet for me uh, on the Bears. Uh, I do think they'll hang in this game. I'm fully expecting Philadelphia to win, and maybe it is a backdoor cover. Maybe they just hang close enough. But uh, I lean the Bears uh, borderline best bet uh, with the nine points. Chop, uh, any best bets for you here with this big number, Philly on the road in Chicago? No best bets, but I'm leaning I'm leaning with you guys. I'm leaning Bears for everything you said. Uh, 
you know, a lot of points at home for the Bears to begin. And uh, classic. This has got to be a classic look-ahead game for Philadelphia. Next week, Christmas Eve against the Cowboys. This has got to be a look-ahead game for them. Yeah, for sure. And we've seen how that uh, works uh, with Dallas. Speaking of Dallas, we're going to get to We got a showdown this week, Dallas and Jacksonville. We'll, we'll get Uh-oh. to that here oh, uh, in a little bit. Actually, the next game uh, after this one coming up, uh, we'll put uh, Notorious against Chop. Maybe a little side action as well. We'll see if we can uh, wrangle something up. Pittsburgh, Carolina, though, the first game. Uh, a ton of line movement uh, in this one, guys. This one opened Pittsburgh minus three. That has swung all the way to the Carolina side. And they now sit as three-point favorites. So six points of line movement in this one, 37 and a half. Uh, the total here, Baker Mayfield. No, Baker, he's in, he's in L.A. now. But no doubt, these offenses both uh, have looked ugly. Uh, chop, this should be an ugly game here. But six points of line movement, uh, certainly interesting here. Pittsburgh been playing well. What are you doing here, Pittsburgh, Carolina? No, no strong take. So I'm just going to lean. I'm going to lean towards Carolina here. They've actually, uh, like Pittsburgh's done, right? They they can't do anything in the playoff hunt. Basically, Carolina can win the damn division and get a home and get a home field game in the first round. They're not that far off, and they've played they played a lot better since they got rid of their coach. They're playing better since they put Darn, Darnold in there. So, yeah, I'm going to lean towards Carolina here and uh, hope they can. Pull out this win by a field goal. Same lean for me. Uh, six points of line movement uh, is quite a lot of movement. Obviously, ideally, you would have got this uh, with the points early on in the week, but still sitting at a field goal here, Noto. So lean to Carolina for me as well. I'm with Chop. Uh, you on the other side here? Are you with us uh, with Panthers at home? Yeah, still mad about uh, last week in the Steelers. I mean, they were looking good. Trubisky had three interceptions on the wrong side of the field, and – uh, they just couldn't get the job done against the Ravens. I still like their defense, but uh, I'm with you guys. You know, Panthers are playing well. And at this point, who's not cheering for them to win the division? Nobody wants to see Tom Brady back in the playoffs. We don't need any more of that. So, yeah, get Darnold in there. And did you guys also see Baker Mayfield won Offensive Player of the Week last week? I mean, okay, he had two good throws, and he gets – I don't know. Anyway. That, that was – I mean, I was – Keeping an eye on the game, I was out. It was 16 to 3, a couple minutes left. All right, this game's over. Get home. And was like, what in the hell happened? But yeah, you're right. I mean, the drive was impressive for sure. I don't know if it was player of the week uh, impressive. So uh, we'll talk some Baker <laughs> later on uh, in the show here. All right, uh, I'll save my Baker takes. All right. Hey, I mean, you want to throw them out now? Have at it. Well, did you guys watch the game at all? I caught bits and pieces of it. Dude, the announcers were acting like this guy was. I don't know, the Messiah, because he came in two days before the game started and he was doing, you know, handoffs. I mean, I couldn't believe how much credit they were giving him. And then he comes back and wins a game. And so it just got worse and worse. I don't, people have an odd fascination with Baker Mayfield. I mean, going back to Oklahoma, even it, this guy's just like a lightning rod. So, all right, showdown time. Dallas, Jacksonville on tap here. Dallas opened up six point favorites. That has come down to four total at. 48 in this one so all right we got a we got a cowboys fan and chop we got a jags fan in notorious i'm gonna start with noto here home team getting points what are we doing i know you're a pessimist i think i already know where you're going here but any faith in your jags uh, to get this one done at home against chops cowboys yeah i can't believe i stacked my jags a week too early stacked them against the lions they couldn't do anything and then they just go off against the titans uh, evan ingram won somebody a million dollars last week um didn't think that was going to happen this season but out of nowhere trevor lawrence looks really good i'm um, gonna get calvin ridley next year so i'm really excited moving forward i do worry about the cowboys ability to get pressure on the quarterback but like chop said this could be a look ahead game for for dallas too so I'm leaning towards taking the points at home uh, for the first time all season. Maybe I think I'm betting on the Jags. Look at that chop. They can't possibly have two look ahead games in a row. Can they? I mean, Houston last week, now you go on the road. I know they're going to have some divisional games coming up here, but uh, Dallas four point favorites uh, in Noto's Jacksonville backyard. What do you got here? Chop? Well, that's the thing about it. You have to navigate between what's a look ahead and what's a fake look ahead. Last week was a look ahead, and they almost got nipped in the bud because of it. Now they're not going to be a look ahead. Now they're going to be focused on Jacksonville. 
knowing that they almost lost last week. So it was a, this is a fake look ahead. So they're they'll be in they'll be in fine shape. I think I think they'll go in there and handle their business. Now four and a half on the road to a team that's really playing well. Two two huge wins in the last three weeks against quality teams. That's you know I think the Cowboys pull off the win, but this could like be a field goal game. So I'm not willing to like put too much on like not a best bet or anything. I'd say I'd probably lean towards Cowboys. I'll say this: If Noto wants to make a bet, I was gonna say we gotta have a side here. action here. This is some, Sunday. Some will, will, you, will you still be in New Orleans? Oh will yeah. Still be okay. Cowboys win. You got to get up on one of them ride one of them electric bulls. <laughs> that, Cowboys win. You got to get on an electric bull. Nothing but downside for me in this bet. Okay, but now you didn't hear it. If the Jaguars win, as a proxy to me, Cal will get up on a riding bull for me. <laughs> I think either way, Kyle should have to get up there. I'm liking this bet. He could be my sure. proxy as well. Oh, man. Anybody, that... Wait a minute. Wait, wait. You just remembered something. Anybody catch the slack pitcher with Dan Bach? Oh, yeah. Hitting his oh, face yeah. and planting See? his face in the ice. <laughs> oh, man. Where, I need the video. Of that. Who's got the and, video of that one, man? Beer, you did a uh, bowl once, right? Me and, me and Dan actually had a head-to-head uh, bull riding in, in Nashville. Uh, I want to say I won, but I, I don't think either of us uh, went more than about 1.5 seconds. So it was uh, it was pretty ugly late at night uh, at the Roto Grinders party. So there's still my wife still has some video of that uh, floating around somewhere. But see. You, you know, Dan's wife has a video of the of the curling incident chop. So we we just got to figure out a way. To get our hands on that, because the aftermath you. was priceless. Like, but the the picture showed nobody going to help. Everybody was just <laughs> filming. So somebody's got to have some video. Yeah, you want to be on the other side of the camera in these situations, not the one, not the one doing the act. No, no, you ever done any curling? I, I always have been fascinated with it. There's a place. Uh, so I'm in Michigan. I'm near Canada. There's a place up there, but never made it up there. Being in Utah, you ever done any curling? I cannot skate, rollerblade, ice skate, nothing. So uh, get me on ice and it's trouble. So I'm not even going to – I'll be Dan times two, I bet. Up like, Yeah, you'll end up like Dan. We don't want that. So, all right, moving on. We're moving to the afternoon slate on Sunday. Looks like a four-gamer here in that four-eastern window. First game, Cardinals and Broncos. Denver started out uh, one-point favorites. That's climbed to three. Another low total uh, at 37. So – uh, Chop will stay with you here. I mean, these two teams, probably the two biggest disappointments uh, all season long. Now, Kyler Murray uh, out for the year on IR. Russell Wilson, we'll see what his status is. So, I mean, we could have backup quarterbacks here, backup running backs. I mean, this thing's a mess, Chop. But I'm not touching this one. Uh, your thoughts here, Arizona and Denver? Yeah, I can't touch it just because I don't know the status of Russell Wilson. They, they, they actually, for the first time all year long, last week against Casey, they had to open it up because they got down so big. So, and he looked great. He, like They almost came back and won that game. Sure enough, late in the game, he gets his – I mean, he gets hammered, man. And he was on – I've never seen Russell get up and be that – he was out – I think he was out cold for a little bit, and then he looked really rough after. So I don't know if he – I doubt he plays, but who knows how they – do the concussion thing these days. But, like, if Russell was going to play, I'd totally lock in the Broncos, but there's no way I can do it not knowing his status. So I have to I have to just kind of pass on this game. There were some brutal hits last week. That one, the Mike White looked like he got hit by a semi-truck in Buffalo. And then the whole Devontae Parker situation. I don't know if you guys saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Guy stumbling around. Nelson Aguilar is going apeshit. Where are like, the spotters at, man? Right, like, all time. Oh, this guy – can't even stand up straight. So th- that's the thing. You know, sometimes they pull these guys off the field and they're, they're fine. The spotters get all involved. And then the next guy's stumbling around and no one's doing anything about it. So I don't, I don't know. Crazy for sure. But uh, Russell definitely took a shot. We'll see if he's back uh, in that game. So uh, thoughts, Cardinals, Broncos. Well, uh, the story all season is if the Broncos could score more than 18 points, they'd have like an incredible record. So the defense has been playing well, and uh, I don't really like their offense. They looked good last week at times, but uh, if Russell's not going to be in there, um, give me the under, and I like it quite a bit, even at 37. 
Yeah, it's 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 always nerve-wracking betting an under when it's that low, but I think that's probably the play here. I don't see either of these offenses uh, doing a whole lot in this one. All right, New England, Vegas up next. Uh, the Josh McDaniels Bowl here. We have a one-point spread in favor of Vegas. That's come down from one and a half. Total at 44 and a half in this one, Noto. So New England, uh, big road win. We'll see uh, status of Ramondre Stevenson here, Damian Harris. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Vegas been playing well. They did uh, activate the windows on Waller and Renfro. That doesn't mean they're back this week. Uh, they have 21 days. So uh, another couple guys that we'll have to keep an eye on. So a lot of injuries to parse through here, Noto. But uh, New England very much uh, in the playoff race here. Big game on the road in Vegas. Yeah, I think uh, New England keeps it going. Uh, they've been playing well. Uh, I, I still don't trust the Raiders. I mean, their offense looks good at times. Their defense can get to the pressure or get to the quarterback every once in a while. But I just don't trust the Raiders even at home. So I will take the Patriots, but not locking that in. Yeah, this is an avoid for me as well. Uh, I can make a case on both sides. Uh, I feel a lot better about New England if Ramondre is there, even if Damian Harris is back. But uh, then backup running backs uh, look pretty strong as well, Harris and Strong. Uh, Chop, thoughts on this one? A lot of injuries. Uh, any takes here with New England and Vegas? My only take is I think uh, New England, I mean, 7-6, and six, congratulations. I don't think they're a 7-6 and six team. I think they're worse than that, and they kind of overperformed. And they keep on catching some pretty lucky breaks. I mean, to lose Kyler Murray on the third play of the game, yeah. Okay, that's kind of hand feeding you a win right there. So uh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna lean on the Raiders, but uh, no no definitive stuff. I'm gonna give you a, a season long bad beat. I don't know what he gives a shit about season long, but I uh, rolled into a championship or a, a, a playoff matchup. Needed 30 points out of Kyler and Ramondre on Monday night. Was feeling pretty good, and then boom, Kyler goes down, Ramondre goes down, uh, and the rest is history. So. While we're talking season long, Chop, how's that? How's that season long team looking? First week of the playoffs this week, I'm looking pretty strong. Looking pretty. Had a we had a big seating, similar to your story. This the, there was some seating involved with Ramondre and Waddle for this guy. He only needed he only needed like 23 points out of the two of them in that Sunday night and Monday night game to advance to the playoffs and knock out the guy that I'm going to end up playing. And you saw what happened. Waddle got basically shut down. Then Ramondre got injured. So the other guy sneaks in. That's the guy I'm playing. I'm the number one seed. I'm on a free roll because number one, get your money back already. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling like I, if I if I lose this first round game, it's a massive upset. I'm feeling pretty good. So uh, knock on wood. All right, we'll ch we'll check back in next week. See if the number one seed survived the first round of the playoffs. Titans Chargers up next. Opened up LA minus one and a half. That's gone to two and a half here at MGM. Mostly threes out there, though. So this one could tick uh, even more here. Total at 46 and a half on this one, Chop. So two teams loitering, uh, as ESPN loves to say here, uh, still hanging around this playoff race. Uh, Titans obviously coming off that big loss at home against Jacksonville. Do they bounce back here on the road? Chargers not great against the run. Feels like could be a good Derrick Henry spot here. It could be. This has got to be a. This is they're trying to bounce back. They really need to. But uh, I'm not. I'm not willing to bet them against the Chargers. I'm not willing to really put any money down on the Chargers against them either. But I'll say this much: I've got to uh, just kind of try to scope out the playoff picture. Like Tennessee is going to be in because their division is not good. Respectfully, Derek, to your Jaguars who are in second place. I don't think they're catching the Titans, but the Chargers are sneaky, sneaky. Really, I think they're in the driver's seat to grab one of the playoff spots. So um, I think they're starting to play well, starting to get a little healthier on offense at least. Uh, I'm going to lean towards the Chargers, but I don't really have a definitive, uh, you know, not, nothing I could put a best bet on. But I, I did do just because you get addicted to it, throw in a couple best, best ball underdog playoff things because it's out there and – Boy, you can get the Chargers basically for free at the end of those drafts, and I think they're going to make the playoffs. I think they're very interesting. I'm jealous, Chop. Underdog uh, pulled out of Michigan, so uh, no no underdog for me, man. I, I guess they didn't want to pay the fees or what, whatever the hell's going on. So What in the – how could – Michigan is like the 
got to be a totally neutral state, right? How the heck yeah, do they play? I, I don't know if it's, you know, with newly formed sports gambling, uh, sports betting oh. here within the last year or two, whatever it was. So I don't know if it has to do with that or what, but I was, I was shocked, you know, go to my underdog account and I'm locked out of the damn thing. So we'll see if they get back here, but I'll, I'll find some best ball for sure. Uh, I'm going to go best bet here and I'm going to chop. I hate to go against you, but I'm going to go with the Titans here. I, I do think Derrick Henry is going to be able to get it going here. The Chargers feel like they're on the right track. And how many times have we talked about it? As soon as you're feeling good about the Chargers, what happens? They pull the old rug on you uh, and, you know, they shit the bed. So I, I think the Titans go in here and play well. Would not shock me to see them win this game. I will gladly take the points here uh, with the Tennessee Titans best bet number four. For me here with the Titans. No, no. So I guess you got to settle the tie here. Now, it wasn't a best bet for Chop, just a lean on the Chargers, but best bet on Titans for me. Agree, disagree. I'm also locking in the Titans. I uh, mentioned it last week. I couldn't bet on the Dolphins because the Chargers, every time you count them out, they come back and win these games. And then every time you get your hopes up, they end up uh, breaking your heart. So everybody's on the Chargers this week. I think the Titans, the biggest mistake the Dolphins made last week, they just didn't run the ball. They didn't even really try to run the ball. Um, and then, you know, they got down early and we were kind of forced into some obvious passing situations. I don't think the Titans are going to do that because last week they had the game under control against the Jags and then they kind of, you know, started airing it out a little bit for no reason. Anyway, I think Derrick Henry runs all over them and I do like the Titans in this spot. All right, I have you both for three best bets here. Two bullets remaining. So uh, check my math. If I miss something, we'll, we'll circle back. All right, last game in the afternoon window, Cincinnati, Tampa Bay. Since he opened up two and a half point favorites, that's gone to three and a half. Total at 44 and a half on this one. So, no, no, the, the old noodle arm continues to struggle. Love the Niners last week. It was probably my favorite bet. Easy win there. You know, Tampa Bay has been horrendous against the spread. I mean, they, they're like two and 10 or something over their last 12 since he on a roll here, but pretty, pretty light number here. I mean, it feels like a somewhat of a trap going with Cincinnati almost seems too easy here. Uh, that's making me stay away from this one. Maybe you have a stronger take here. Bengals Tampa Bay. Yeah. If I could have got it at two and a half, I probably would have locked it in, but you guys have been right about the Buccaneers pretty much all season. Uh, I think you guys both locked in the Niners last week. Should have followed you on that one. Uh, pretty easy win for them at home. You just, man, Tampa Bay can't move the football, and I don't think anybody's stopping Cincinnati right now. So I will lean towards them, but I can't lock it in at three and a half. I, I really want to as well. It, Chop, am I, am I reading something wrong here? The number just seems too light. I mean, how could it only be two and a half, three and a half? I mean, is it just Tom Brady getting too much respect here? So you got a best bet on this one, or are you kind of reading it the same way here? No, they pushed it up over a field goal, so I'm not going to put a best bet on it. But uh, I kind of agree. It seemed, I mean, yeah, they just can't move the ball. Tampa Bay on offense, they're just – the offensive line is bad, and Brady has not – like we, we all kind of expected this years ago. You're going to finally fall off, you know. But he, he just kind of kept going and going. This is the fall off year. This is it, and we're watching it. And he can't do much, and uh, Mike Evans is on the sidelines getting very mad, and there's some frustration. So, But uh, once they push it up over a field goal, I ain't going to mess with it. So uh, I would lean towards the Bengals too, but I can't I can't lock it in. Simple yes or no answer here. Is this Tom Brady's last season, Chop? No. No, no? Well, I can't, can't say this in one word, but if his money's uh, stuck in FTX, he's got to play a few more. Oh, years. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no doubt. I mean, he's got that that plush four hundred fifty million dollar Fox contract. Here's the, yeah, he's got that, but it's not about money. We know that. It's uh, is this the way you want to look going out? Do you want to try to at least salvage something out of the last perception? Like, yeah, but come what back if you're worse you're, next year? I mean, you, you might be out of decline. You might be where maybe at least come back to camp and see if you feel better, and then retiring, or, or uh, like, yeah. You, I don't know. I don't know his personal situation, but it feels like coming back to football cost him his person. Like it feels like she said, "Oh, you're going back. I'm out of here." I don't know. I don't know. But if you already lost that because of football, hell, you might as well play another. You know, you might as well play another year. You already gave up so much for it. Might as well, even if you're a backup, even if you're terrible. Yeah, I mean, you lost your wife, and you might as well just 
not lose her for just one season. At least you might as well run the whole gamut, play to your 50 now, shit. Yeah. <laughs> he might try, too. If there's anybody that would try to play at least 50, uh, it's Tom Brady here. So I think we all lean towards the Cincinnati side. Uh, but, again, that number seems a, a little funky. So no best bets. On that one, Sunday Night Football, NFC East, big game here. Both teams, 7-5, and five, Giants and Commanders open up Washington, three-and-a-half-point favorites. That has gone to four-and-a-half total on this one uh, at 40. So I believe they flex this game out. I, I understand it. You know, it's, they're, they're two teams tied in the standings, but 40-point total Sunday Night Football chop does not sound uh, very appetizing here. So big number here. Two teams we talked about, they met a few weeks ago, kind of going in opposite directions. Uh, Washington was playing well. Giants kind of coming back down to earth here. Who comes out on top here? This is a big game uh, in the NFC and the NFC East. Washington comes out on top. Uh, it's four and a half, so I'm not comfortable putting that in as a best bet, but Washington should win. it. They played very recently. Uh, that was the tie game, and – I think Washington outplayed them and got very, very unlucky not to win that game. And so uh, now they're coming back at home. That was on the road. I think they win this game. I'm just not sure about the four and a half. So I'll lean towards Washington. But the Giants are who we thought they were. They won a bunch of one-score games, and now it's all catching up to them. Absolutely. RIP Denny Green uh, are who we thought they are. I am with you on Washington. I am not going best bet either. Uh, you know, if it was three, three and a half, I feel a lot better about a four and a half. Uh, not that it's a huge number, but I think the Giants do stay close here. But at the end of the day, Chop, I'm with you. I think Washington a much better team. So lean towards the Commanders. Noto, any stronger feelings here? Sunday Night Football, Giants, Commanders. Yeah, lock me into Washington. I, I'll bet this up to 10. I mean, I love the spot for them. I like them a, a lot. in when they played in New York in week 13, and then they had a bye. So they've been playing the same team for three weeks, three weeks of preparation for the same team. And then you have New York. They just got smoked by Philly at home. Uh, you guys mentioned all the numbers. You know, Washington looks a lot better on paper. New York's been winning a lot of these close games. It's starting to come back uh, to bite them. And I just think they steamroll them in this spot. All right. Another uh, yawner here. And I hate to, to talk crap about my team. But speaking of Baker Mayfield, the Rams uh, coming to Lambeau Field to take on the Packers again. This probably looked great on paper to open the season. Rams, Packers in December. Like, hell yeah, we want that on Monday Night Football. You know uh, they'd love to pull the plug uh, on this one uh, and get one of those other games in here. But here we sit, uh, opened up Green Bay, nine and a half point favorites. That's come all the way down uh, to seven total here at 39 and a half. So another total under 40. Just a rough week this week. DFS should be a ton of fun, but... Uh, I have my last best bet here. I'll lead off here. Gone against my team. I've gone with my team. I am going to trust in the Packers this week. I think the defense is going to play well. I know they have some injuries, but Baker is not going to go into Lambeau Field uh, and, and have some drives like he did last week. I, I think he's going to be exposed. Uh, this Rams offense we know is not playing at a very high level right now. Yes, you give him credit uh, for that win against the Raiders, but I think Rodgers and company can do enough. In his mind, they're still alive in the playoffs, so there is that motivation uh, to win this game, and I think they win pretty handily here, guys. So uh, the line has gone the other way. I understand that, but I will gladly lay the seven here. Green Bay, my final best bet here. Noto, wrap us up on NFL football, Rams, Packers. Yeah, right there with you. Going to lock in the Packers as well. One of my favorite pastimes, betting against Baker Mayfield. Uh, this go. guy, uh, I just, man, uh, the fact that they won that game is getting us a lot better number on this week's game so uh, i love it packers coming off the bye they just if they run the ball 30 times they're going to be fine in this one chop i still have you with two bullets remaining I, I may have missed something along the way but are you utilizing one of said bullets here on baker mayfield i am not using it on mayfield but i am using it in this game uh i'm taking the packers best bet that's pretty easy to me I love the Packers in this game coming off a of bye week. And then uh, the Rams, you know, their miracle comeback last week got them on cloud nine, but they're about to, you know, they're about to face a real team here, I think, uh, a team that's uh, going to play really well. So I got the Packers here. Uh, I don't know what's the, what's the uh, initial weather report look like in Green Bay there, Beer. 
Uh, I mean, cold. It's actually Just... going to be colder than it's been. So okay. I, I want to say uh, that's good. The lows good. are down there in the in the teens. Okay. Well, the thing about Baker is we've talked about Tua being, you know, Tua and golf not wanting to play in cold weather. I think Baker's the opposite. He kind of kind of thrives in the cold weather, but it's anything above thirty that really gets him, and he really sucks in the above thirty degree weather. So, I okay, guess Baker will be fine. But the team in general is just not good right now. They're sending guys to IR. The season's over with. They, you know, it's a done deal. The Packers, I don't know mathematically what their playoff thing is, but it's like they're still I, fighting. They're still fighting for life it. And support. Aaron, and Aaron Rodgers even said, I will play up until the minute that we cannot, you know, make the playoffs anymore. So they're still going to fight, and they had the bye week. I like the Packers here big time. It's part of me, like, almost wants them to lose. I know I just put a best bet on Green Bay, but just so that he can sit, let's see Jordan Love. What do we have here? Like, I, we, guy's been here for 10 years and, and no idea if he's uh, like, capable of being uh, the, the quarterback or not. So, uh, we'll see. Uh, but I do think Green Bay rolls, unfortunately, and the Aaron Rodgers saga uh, continues. So, Chop, I want to give you your picks just because I, I don't know yeah. if I missed one, but you have Cleveland, Buffalo, the Jets, and Green Bay, four best bets. So Yeah, let's go back to the Panthers. Uh, let me give me them Panthers against the Steelers. All right, so Cleveland, Buffalo, Jets, Carolina, and Green Bay for Chop. Noto is rolling with Cleveland, Buffalo, Tennessee, Washington, and Green Bay. I am on Cleveland, Miami, Atlanta, Tennessee, and Green Bay. So Cleveland, Green Bay, uh, across the board, you guys both, uh, on Buffalo and two of us, uh, Noto and I in Tennessee. So uh, those are the ones uh, that doubled up, tripled up. So uh, lock those in if you're going with any crazy parlays or anything, uh, courtesy of the OG. So that will do it here for our week 15 show. We will be back uh, next week. Christmas week should be fun. Uh, so we'll talk a little holiday stuff as well. Talking week 16, but guys, final thoughts for the people here. Chop, what do you got week 15? Let's go. Now we're in it, man. We're in it. We got the whole Saturday, Sunday thing going on for two weeks in a row there. Uh, next week is the holidays. We got the playoffs starting in fantasy. It, you can't just you can't beat this. Now, this is the real holiday season here. So oh, yeah. in, enjoy it because this is it doesn't get any better than this. And once that once that clock strikes around New Year, everything's downhill. Yep. Then we get into the Throws of the NBA, uh, late season scratches and, and all that good fun. So enjoy this while you got it. Again, we got football Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, college bowl season getting started here soon as well. So uh, lots going on. Make sure you head over uh, and utilize scores and odds. So it covers all of the different sports. So don't miss out. Uh, if you have not signed up yet, uh, go and check that out today. No, no. Final thoughts. Week 15, buddy. What do you got? Yeah, if anybody's out in New Orleans at the event, come say what's up. Cal will buy us some drinks, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, if you want to waste some time, go to 538.com. It has the, the win probability or the playoff probabilities of each team. And then you can go through every game the next three weeks, and it'll change the probabilities based on you know who you think is going to win. So right now the Packers, 6%. If they win this week, it goes up to 7 But if they win out, it goes up to 35 So they're not dead yet. Yeah, uh, they're they're pretty much dead. So uh, at least I love the optimism, uh, Noto. But uh, if you are in New Orleans, we also will need footage of Cal and Noto on the bowl. And if Miss Mrs. Bach is listening to the show, we're gonna we're gonna need that video of your husband taking a spill there on the ice, uh, trying to curl. So Dan, a Florida guy should not be messing with ice. There's just things that you just leave alone. So. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Best of luck with your bets here uh, in week 15. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on your favorite podcast app, do us a favor. Leave that five-star review. Run out of weeks here uh, to talk uh, with the OG. So appreciate you guys for taking time and hanging out with us once again this week. For Notorious, for Head Chopper, I am Beer. We are the DFS OGs. Thank you so much for watching. Best of luck with your bets this week. And we'll catch you next week. Kick off the new pro football season with the king of sportsbooks. Sign up at BetMGM using bonus code GRINDERS and your first wager is risk-free up to $1,000. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Louisiana, Michigan, Mississippi, Nevada, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Puerto Rico, Tennessee, Virginia, Washington, D.C., West Virginia, Wyoming, or Ontario only. Must be 21 years or older to wager. 19 or older in Ontario, new customer offer only 
All promotions are subject to qualification and eligibility requirements. Rewards issued as non-withdrawable free bets or site credit. Free bets expire seven days from issuance. Excludes Michigan disassociated persons. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP in Arizona. 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado, D.C., Kansas, Louisiana, Nevada, Wyoming, or Virginia. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan. 1-800-GAMBLER in Indiana, Maryland, New Jersey, or West Virginia. 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. 1-800-981-0023 in Puerto Rico. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Call or text the Tennessee red line at 800-889-9789 in Tennessee or call 1-888-777-9696 in Mississippi and Ontario. If you have any questions or concerns about your gambling or someone close to you, please contact Connects Ontario at 1-866-531-2600 to speak to an advisor free of charge. Sports betting is void in Georgia, Hawaii, Ohio, and Utah and other states where prohibited. Promotional offers not available in Nevada and New York. 